Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enterprise Agility Podcast. I'm your host, John Lim. We've got two great guests who you'll hear from shortly, Sankardeep Dar and Andy Jordan. Today, we're diving into our next series, which covers a topic I'm sure no one has ever heard of before. Right, Andy? That topic is generative AI. If you have heard of it, you'll be aware of the idea that it's redefining work. If you believe all the headlines, everyone's going to be unemployed. We're all going to be replaced by intelligent software and, and no one's going to have a job anymore. <laughs> well, I certainly hope my job is not being replaced. But yeah, bringing it back to the point, Gen AI isn't truly that simple, right? And it still has lots of room to mature. And there's a lot of issues that have to be addressed and organizations are trying to figure out what is it that they need to do with, with AI? How can they best use it? How can they ensure that they're getting benefits from it and not being misled? How can they deal with all the issues around legal and privacy and ethics and all this kind of stuff? And fortunately, people like Sankadeep are putting a lot of thought into this. So let me throw it over to you, Sankadeep, and start with a really simple question. When you're talking with clients, when, when you're having conversations with them, what are you seeing about the state of Gen AI in, in their organizations? How are they responding? How are they looking to adopt it? What's their attitudes towards this disruptive technology? Hey, thanks for the warm welcome, Andy. Now, I have been involved in having conversations with customers on their Gen AI journey over the last 12 months or so. And I see how they are gradually progressing on their maturity journey with Gen AI. For example, the first time we interacted with our customers, which was about this time last year in the Amsterdam Technology Workflow Summit, there was a lot of uncertainty. Technology leaders and enthusiasts knew the high potential of this now ready-to-use tech, but were very unsure of how they really fit in their technology landscape. Uh, what kind of risk did it bring in and what were the use cases beyond the regular content generation? And from an organization leadership perspective, they knew they had to respond, but they didn't know exactly how. Fast forward 12 months, I have interacted with a room full of customers in our last ServiceNow Summit in Amsterdam and Brussels a few weeks ago. When I asked them, do you know what your company strategy is on Gen AI? Majority of them answered a resounding yes. Does it mean that they have figured out everything? Uh, I actually don't think so. And in that summit, there was also a Gen AI customer panel. And there were three things which came out pretty significantly uh, in that panel that I want to share with our listeners today. The first one is uh, what these panel members shared with us is that uh, use AI to solve your business challenge. It should not be seen within the technology alone. The second is AI use cases and ideas come from the business and not just IT. And the third one which they shared is that uh, from a leadership perspective, they feel the pressure to jump on AI, uh, but what they have realized is that they need to be careful as well. So there's a lot of, still a lot of unknowns, uh, but at least many companies now have a strategic direction. And this is a brilliant example where the whole leadership team of an organization along with the leadership from the business, the CIO, the head of enterprise architecture, they have come together, collaborated to come up with their Gen AI strategy, to set these strategic priorities and how they would adopt this technology to achieve realistic business outcomes. Customers are now able to look beyond this Gen AI hype and are actually now coming up with very realistic plans to guide the whole organization. That's excellent. It, it's it's good to see that in such a short period of time, you said your know, first conversation is just 12 months ago, how quickly organizations have evolved. But 
I can imagine that there are leaders listening to us now who are thinking, well, okay, but I've got a million other priorities and I've only got so many things that I can deliver here. I've only got so many resources. I've only got so much money just to invest. Why is it that every organization should be developing this Gen AI strategy now? And how do they then go about converting strategy into reality? What do they need to do when it comes to the execution of an AI strategy? Excellent question, Andy. For the argument's sake, let's assume that a particular organization doesn't set that strategic direction. What happens then? The good news is that they will be able to get started with Gen AI. Typically, they will start in IT, uh, carve out a team, call them something like the AI incubation team. And they will experiment with Gen AI, monitor industry learnings, develop out of the possible, and also share their challenges and successes uh, with the other teams. A lot of AI-specific risks like hallucinations, reputational risks are also identified uh, at this stage. And many of the customers that I have spoken to actually begin this way. Now, the bad news. Companies can be short-sighted if they keep this within IT only. This means this team will miss out on a lot of valuable use cases which might have been possible to even come from their business counterparts. And the whole nature of this tech is that is it forces us to think about the outcomes before we engage the technology. For example, would the company just want to focus on reducing cost with AI or would it also fuel revenue growth and maybe even enter into a new market with AI? So this short-sighted local experimentations eventually lead to very non-cohesive results. And this is where company leadership should step in. And uh, there are a couple of things, uh, actually two things that they can do and they should do. The first one is that leadership team should help to break these organizational silos and help to set up something like an AI center of excellence, uh, which has both IT and business representatives. And the second is to set the strategic direction for this COE and the rest of the organization, which will help them to identify and prioritize the right use cases. Now, in return, what leadership expects from the COE are, well, the value of the investments on AI projects, experimentations, and uh, what sort of uh, new talent uh, that the company should be hiring. In addition to this, leadership thinks in terms of business value, return on investment ROI, and rightfully so. Now, Gartner, for example, has stated that a significant number of Gen AI projects actually as big as 30% of these projects will be abandoned. And one of the main reason uh, for this is unclear business value. So Andy, if you really think about it, business value is actually a great tool for the AI center of excellence to properly prioritize the numerous use cases which they would be receiving based on the business value, right? And we will talk more about this in our next podcast. Now, I want to highlight another major challenge which I believe is the biggest challenge which will stop organizations to reap the full benefit of Gen AI. So Andy, do you have any favorite guess about this? I can think of a million things that might stop full potential, but in my experience, <laughs> organizations yeah. usually create problems for themselves. So it's probably an internal issue. Yes, that's act actually, you are uh, pretty close uh, to what I have in mind. 
So the biggest challenge, in my opinion, is the lack of enterprise agility. And this is a big challenge to execute not just Gen AI strategy, but any strategy, uh, in fact. And this is where leadership, uh, AI COE, and the delivery team need to think beyond their silos and adopt a framework to make sure that work flows across the whole organization, connecting every department, every business unit, and aligning work to companies' strategic priorities. Now, I want to summarize this conversation with two main points for our listeners today. The first one is create your Gen AI strategy if you haven't already done so. Because other companies in your industry are really doing that right now. And if you're someone who is involved or leading AI programs or projects, check with your leadership for those strategic directions. The second is think about properly executing your Gen AI strategy. Make sure that you are setting up your teams for success by removing organizational blocks and giving them the right tools and frameworks to succeed. And we will double click on this topic in our next podcast. So stay tuned. Thank you.